So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the goals we've set out to uh, achieve here, starting with security. And um, obviously real security is being stored in this network. And so we need to not only protect against the threats that we currently face, but also threats that are in the near uh, future. And quantum secure, our quantum security is something that you'll hear a lot uh, when you read anything about Praxis. Uh, we actually have an entire blog series about this that I recommend you go read if you're interested. Uh, but quantum security is important because most of the cryptography that is currently used to secure the wallets in any blockchain platform out there uh, can be fatally broken by a sufficiently powerful quantum computer. And this not only you know, is, is limited to blockchain platforms, it extends to many of the secure data infrastructures uh, that you interact with on a daily basis on the internet. And so we don't think this is necessarily a threat in the next year, but we have seen a lot of development and investment in this space. And the problem with this is when it does become a problem, we likely won't know about it. This is something where the value of breaking uh, public key cryptography lies mainly in your ability to leverage it without other people, you know, before other people know about it and start protecting against it. Um, and so, you know, building a cryptocurrency or a, or a currency of the future means that it should be able to, it, it should be built uh, to already withstand the attacks of a quantum computer. And retrofitting a blockchain to be quantum secure is not a trivial task. And unless you've designed around the limitations that quantum security, um, quantum secure cryptography introduces, you're going to hit major performance hurdles. So retrofitting some of the existing blockchains with quantum secure uh, cryptography is not going to be a trivial task. And so we've gone ahead and integrated quantum secure cryptography from the beginning. Uh, we do this using one-time use hash-based signatures, which I'll talk about a little bit in the next webinar. Um, and we use a specific version of that called Watts Plus.